right, so there wasn't a What Sold video last week, and that's because I was sick. I wasn't just a little sick, I was very sick. I pretty much had walking pneumonia. Fortunately today, I would say I'm about 80% better. So last week was tough, I worked too hard, and I continued to make myself sicker and gave myself the weekend to rest, I feel pretty good. So this week's video will probably have a little bit of last week's stuff in it as well as the week before since I skipped that week. And I'm also going to break up the video into two sections. I'm going to have a separate video now for my what sold stuff and then I'm going to have a separate video for my packing and shipping stuff. I realize my videos are getting pretty long, they're usually averaging around 14 minutes or so and I don't think everybody's making it through the whole video and they're kind of jumping off ha at the halfway point so if you're into both you'll have to watch two videos if you're into just one or the other just choose the one you want to watch yeah that's pretty much all I'm gonna say for this week and uh, I'm just gonna be taking it easy and I hope you all have a good week this is a vintage handwoven Navajo rug it's what they call a gallop throw so it's smaller than a regular Navajo blanket or Navajo rug this one's about, I think, 39 inches by 19 inches across. And it's got this kind of very distinctive, almost like a fringe, but Navajo rugs and blankets typically don't have fringes, but it's where they tie off the, uh, the binding thread, I believe, and makes this kind of edge, which almost looks like someone cut off the fringe, but it's not the case on this. And this piece here I found at a walk-around auction. Funny enough, I saw it in a photo advertising for that auction. It was just buried underneath a bunch of stuff and just a little corner of it stuck out. And I could just see that it was a Navajo blanket or a Navajo rug. And I went there to hunt it down. And this place is a hoarder's paradise. It's in the basement of a restaurant that they turn into, it's an old pub, I guess. And they turn it into an auction every Wednesday night and it's dark, you gotta hunt around with a flashlight. It's, it's full of all sorts of crazy characters. Uh, it's, a real, it's a real scene. And so I hunted around trying to find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. And finally I discovered it about, probably about five or 10 minutes before the auctioneer got to the table that they're about to sell. And I pulled it out and uh, I ended up getting it for five bucks. I don't believe this is an antique one. I'm not entirely sure, but I listed it as vintage and it's in the Germantown style. My largest sale to date was a Navajo rug, which I picked up at auction for $60. It was a large, genuine, antique Navajo rug. It was probably from 1910. And I ended up selling that rug for $1,200. So when I do come across Navajo rugs, I usually will go for them because there is really decent money in these. This one here, I paid $5 for, as I said. And I had it up for $249 and I went back and forth with the lady on it and she was asking if I had any authentication papers and I said no just as it is I said and so she said if would I be willing to take 150 so I said sure that's fine so this sold for $150 this is a lot of seven used cassette tapes and I grouped all these together because they are all type 4 metal tapes so these are kind of the higher quality tapes that often real audio files are looking for. This one here says bar music something. Bar music mix. These are all pretty scuffed up and uh, at least the cases are. I did not listen to any of these but they all appeared to be in working condition. And I've learned from Steve Schultz and on the Scavenger Life podcast that tapes tend to do pretty well and there are people out there looking for these things. So I picked these up under under the table at a walk around auction it was just a shoe box nobody saw it i got it for two dollars and these here these seven sold for fifty dollars this is a u.s army military bar i believe it's world war ii and these are victory ribbons for various military campaigns i did look them up and ended up put labeling them as such and this came from one of the various World War II kind of military lots that I've purchased over the years. And I can't really remember what I probably paid for the lot, but I am sure I've made my money back several times on it. So anything else is just real profit. So this piece here, not a ton of money, just $12. This is a vintage Elgin Sportsman watch. It's a 17 jewel watch. And Elgin watches can typically have a little bit of value to them if they're in good condition and they're working. This one here, actually does work but it's missing the second hand counter that's supposed to be on that little dial there on the right where the six would be 
and it's just got some damage. It's rough overall. So this really didn't have much value to it. I tried to sell it for about $32. I got someone who made an offer of 11. I brought them up to 15 and I'm just happy to sell it at that price. This watch came in one of the various watch lots that I purchased from time to time. And usually I pay about $15 to $30 for those lots. And I usually receive about 50 to 100 watches. Many of them are broken and many of them need new batteries. There's a little bit of work involved sometimes to sell them. And a lot of them I just kind of lot out together as broken watches. But uh, overall, it's just kind of fun. You learn about watches and stuff like that. This is an Italian sterling silver curb chain anklet. It's about 10 inches. It's Mark Sterling and also DES there. And it also has a mark for Italy. And this chain I found in the trash and I sold it for $15. This is a couple pieces of vintage cloisonne enamel on brass or enamel on copper plates. They're just small. They're about three and a quarter inches across. And I got a bunch of these in a tray lot at auction. I can't remember what I paid for it, but most tray lots I pay usually less than $20 for. And these, I remember, were not the choice pieces in there, but there was about 15 or 20 of these, uh, all in different colors, some different sizes, and I listed them all up. Uh, some of them I've been pairing up, some of the bigger pieces I've been selling separately. And Closnay stuff can, can get pretty good money if it's the big pieces. These small ones are pretty much export pieces that they're still desirable, but there's not a lot of money in these. But these here sold for $27.95. In some of my earlier videos, I featured some of these Revolutionary War forks, which I got at auction in a large lot of kind of kitchenware. And this knife was in there, and it's got a similar kind of handle. It's a bone handle, and this says sheer steel on it. And so I wasn't sure if this was also Revolutionary War era or not, but I put it up anyways, and I just put Revolutionary War question mark, basically. Uh, just my best guess since it was in that same lot and this here sold for $18. This is a couple of military brigade patches. I believe they're US Army. I got these at an estate sale where I bought a large box, cardboard box full of kind of more modern era, kind of 1980s, 1990s military stuff. And I've been selling through that for about three years now and I featured some of those items in my other videos. I don't have a lot left, but I have a bunch of these patches, probably about 50 of them, and I've just put them up as pairs, and every once in a while, one of them, one of these lots sell, and so these here were $6.95. Not a lot of money, but I do have a lot of them, so when they sell. I buy sterling silver dinnerware at auctions from time to time, and often it will come on these large tray lots of just kind of random pieces, and this piece here came on tray lot it was probably about 50 pieces of silver some of them were matching pieces and some of them were just odds and ends and if I take the time to research them figure out the pattern the, and the makers mark and then list them accordingly they can sell for pretty good money from people who are looking to replace say a missing piece in their dinnerware set so this here I got in a tray lot it was about 50 pieces in it and I paid probably about eighty dollars for it and I've sold a bunch of pieces from this tray lot already this one here sold for $34.95. And it's a bit long tail. It takes a little while for these pieces to sell, but it's one of those things they kind of they just sell here and there pretty regularly. It's pretty easy to make back my initial investment. I keep these in bags typically after I kind of clean them up. If they're really filthy, I'll just put them in a bag because they do take a little while to sell and they will get a little bit oxidized and start to tarnish. So the bag kind of keeps them looking a bit nicer.